Hey, this is Chris McFarland. I am the, the Army Strategic Development Lead for General Atomics. What we're standing in front of is our Mojave Short Takeoff and Landing Aircraft. It is specifically designed to be runway independent. Years ago, we had a long conversation with the Army about how to do that, and we came up with a, a concept that is short takeoff and landing. It does not need a runway or runway infrastructure. So dirt roads out in the, out in the desert or in, an, in a, a, an urban setting, or even in, uh, say, in the Pacific, maybe a jungle setting where you have a hard pack, anything like that. So it takes off, any, the distances depend on the, the load you're carrying, so you can customize it. You can swap fuel and different payloads that we'll go through the, those in a second for what this aircraft can do. But for the Army, it gives them the capability to stage a very, very capable aircraft with very long range, uh, very high payload capability. It's, it's able to carry cargo as well, and we'll show you that in one of the cargo pods that we've designed, uh, to, to carry forward to those unsupported users, particularly in a Pacific environment where there's lots of, lots of blue in between where, where soldiers tend to be. So the, the long range and extended endurance of this aircraft have unique capability to address those, whereas some of the other options, you have to trade some of those things. We think this gives commanders a great option to, to deploy and employ anywhere. It's also great in all the phases of the fight. You don't have to wait until the conflict stage to start using this. You have forward deployed soldiers, you can bring them uh, aid, you can bring them uh, munitions, you can bring them sensors, you can bring them small UASs even if you need to do that. So there's, there's a myriad of options in addition to the RISTA, uh, reconnaissance, surveillance, targeting, and, and acquisition that you, that you can also do with this aircraft. The onboard sensors will consist of a synthetic aperture radar. Uh, probably, depending on what theater it is and what, what the Army chooses to do or other customers, foreign customers choose to do, an ELINT and a Comet, which means at the altitude this aircraft flies, you're going to be able to start to pick up things at somewhere around 300 kilometers. It's also got uh, a capability to detect UASs and small UASs at a much further range than the ground-based units. So it adds a layer of protection to the ground forces against, against UAS. Counter UAS is a growing growing threat, and it's it's a very serious one. So we have a way to do that. The first thing you have to do with those is find them, track them, before you can either kill them yourself or send someone else to kill them. So again, this aircraft, it's got about uh, 100 to 200 hours on it already. This is the real aircraft. This is not a mock-up. Um, it's got a turbine engine in the back to give it the thrust for that short takeoff. It's, you can see it's got big tires to handle the, the rough ground or cratered runways or taxiways or things like that. And it's got a big wing mass wing with uh, control surfaces on the back. Typically our aircraft don't have a lot of those because it, it's an endurance hit. But for this one to get that short takeoff and landing capability, it's there. So we have the lift to get off and the power to drive it on unimproved surfaces, dirt roads, and things like that. So that's the general background of the aircraft and where it fits with the Army. So let's transition to some of the capabilities that we're showing here. Um, it's an open architecture design. We don't care whose stuff goes on it. Whatever the mission needs and supports or the theater has, we'll be uh, happy to put on here. So starting with the, this one right here, the switchblade, it's an aero environment system. We've already launched those from our its sister capability at MQ-9. Uh, we already, we've already done all the work that we know we can launch it off this aircraft as well as our Gray Eagle. Uh, aero environment's got about three or four different versions. They're, they're working with us to get in demonstrations over the next couple of years. Great capability to bring the Army. So you have an unmanned aircraft go thousands of kilometers and then it can launch these, all these things on the wings, some of them up to another thousand kilometers. So you have that standoff survivability where the aircraft stays outside the weapons engagement zone or the WES and the systems penetrate that so they can have whatever effect it is. It could be kinetic, it could be non-kinetic, it could be jamming, it could be decoy, it could be anything. So that's what this aircraft is equipped to do for hopefully United States Army and uh, certainly for military sales customers and uh, partners. So, so that's a switchblade. Moving over here a little bit. Excuse me. So this, this is a, a, it's essentially a missile from a small business, uh, Huntsville based GTS. Uh, again, showing the, showing the ability to incorporate other people's things. This, this is a long range um, uh, missile. It's designed to go kill ships. So if you look at a maritime role again, for foreign partners as well as the Pacific mission. This thing can go about 1,200 kilometers and its targeting system is embedded in it so it doesn't rely on GPS or anything to get there. It uses a visual image, finds the target, and then goes right at it. The, 
this current design is an anti-ship uh, warhead that's inside this, but it could be anything. It's all changeable and uh, shows that we can take third-party things. It, nothing has to be GA. It can be anyone else's stuff. So transitioning over to another capability that we've highlighted on this particular aircraft is the ability to bring cargo forward in all stages of combat. Doesn't matter where you are or what you need. So here we've got a cargo pod. We can carry up to 2,200 pounds of cargo on this aircraft, a couple thousand kilometers, and still do the wrist of mission that I talked about earlier, the reconnaissance mission. So in here we've got some uh, ammo cans, medical supplies, blood. Some of those are some of the things that people talk about all the time. So this is a specifically designed pod that, that GA did, but we can take others. Uh, clamshell opens up real easy, soldier, soldier supported. Everything on this aircraft, by the way, is designed to be soldier maintained and soldier supported. So we're getting rid of those field service reps that are, that are always a burden in the field when you deploy forward. This aircraft is, is designed to eliminate that, that, that challenge and the cost that goes with that. So real proud of the cargo pod, fairly amazing capability to bring soldiers what they need while you're still doing all these other missions. Over here is a, a standard 19-shot rocket pod. As an old helicopter pilot, this is my old buddy right here. This, uh, this 2.75-inch rocket is uh, uh, an APKWS, so Advanced Precision Kill Weapon System. Inside here could be flechettes. So if you look at, again, multi-role approach here, this aircraft can do counter UAS for you. It can, it, with its radar, it can detect, track, and target uh, group twos and above. Um, so it's, it's already tracked balsa wood RC planes. So it, 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 the, the radar's got a good job. If you need the aircraft to be kinetic, it can launch these uh, APKWS rockets and then flechettes come out of them and it'll handle swarms of smalls and things like that. The advantages were at altitude. So the radar looking down, the radar was designed for air to ground. So picking targets out of ground clutter is what it's designed to do. So low flying small things are right in its sweet spot to be able to track and get those things. And this is just one of those things with that growing uh, UAS threat. So in here, uh, it isn't installed here right now, but would be the synthetic aperture radar. So that, that's the one that uh, I mentioned earlier, can pick up those counter UAS, uh, or those UAS systems, the threat UAS systems. But it also has a maritime mode, so we're, we're developing the air-to-air -air mode, it has a maritime mode, and then it has its standard ground target mode, even to where it can pick up individuals. So we're detecting the, the small threat UASs right now out to about 30. We're gonna go beyond that very soon. And with the, uh, uh, the SAR, we're out to, the synthetic aperture radar, we're out to 80 kilometers, where we have targetable information. So the aircraft doesn't have to fly into a threat zone, a weapons engagement zone. So that all helps with its ability for multi-mission, multi-use. Other side of the airplane, again, these, this, is, this is a combination of multiple things. This configuration probably wouldn't be something that anybody would pick to fly, but if they wanted to, we could, we could make it work. So again, you see the size of the tires and the landing gear. Uh, on here, we've got some uh, mock-up Hellfires and, and some standard air-to-ground missiles that, that all the services use. Um, so the ranges on these are, are all different. So depending on what theater you're in and where you have support. The nice thing is that not needing a runway, we can fly this aircraft into a rearm refuel site that is in a remote area. It doesn't have to be on a big airfield or a large infrastructure uh, system. So the ability to resupply, refuel the aircraft very rapidly anywhere in the world gives commanders multiple options. It's also a survivability uh, enhancement because you don't have to land in the same place all the time or a pre-targeted site that everybody knows. So lots of uh, flexibility for the operational commanders. So again, some air-to-air -air missiles. This is very interesting here. This is, this is a long-range launched effect is a category the Army would put it in. It serves a dual role though. This is a six and a half hour uh, airplane. It carries a 40 pound payload for six and a half hours. So it, it, it can be a loitering munition, it can be a long range, it goes a thousand kilometers one way. And the nice thing is it's recoverable. It's a belly lander and the payload's in the back, 40 pound payload in the back that is protected. So you can belly land this thing. The propeller on the back is designed to pop off, totally replaceable at the soldier level. So in the field, they've been able to launch this and it can have any kind of electronic payload in it or kinetic, non-kinetic, 
whatever you want to do with that 40 pounds is available. So again, the options of you doing it one way, about a thousand kilometers, or a six and a half hour uh, loitering type capability. So an amazing kind of combination of capability. So if you look at what you could support the uh, long range fires challenge, right? Everyone in all the services wants to have very long range, very precision fires. Well, you have to have very precise targeting information in order to achieve that. So you can, this aircraft can fly a couple thousand kilometers, loiter for a couple hours, and then launch any of these ordnance or non-ordnance pieces, kinetic or non-kinetic effects. The, the, the thing you're trying to achieve is a specific fact, effect at a specific time against a specific threat on the battlefield to enable an advantage for the maneuver forces or the friendly forces. This aircraft gives you multiple ways to achieve that. You can achieve mass with, say you wanted a bunch of those small uh, air environment systems. You can load this airplane up with a whole bunch of those. So those can create an, uh, a flanking um, uh, attack on a threat while the ground maneuver force goes another direction. We can launch decoys, demos, all those other things that you can do to confuse the enemy, make their decision making as complex as possible and then create overmatch where we need. So that's really what this aircraft is designed to do in a nutshell, is it can create overmatch while being survivable in all phases of conflict, not just the shooting parts of it. Where we are in development with this aircraft, this is a fully functioning demonstrator. It is flown off carriers, fl flown off dirt strips, and then standard runways, taxiways, and all those kinds of things to prove its capabilities. So the Army is looking at a potential new replacement for their division reconnaissance capability. So we at GA think this gives them a lot of options to look at and consider as they go forward. So as that's moving forward, we also got significant foreign interest with, you see behind me, uh, Hanwha, a Korean, South Korean company, and their military is interested in this as well, and Hanwha will be a partner. Now the advantages of this right now in the, in the U.S. government is anything you can do with our allies and partners to offset the initial cost, the developmental cost that typically the Army pays billions for, and as we've seen in the last few years, lost, right? Those programs didn't pan out. This, this is not only a cost and risk share, it also is a speed, because right now we need to get things to the field. So this partnership will allow us to, to work the manufacturing pieces, shared cost, shared development. The U.S. Army is also interested if this goes forward as the selected system that they could work with the, the Koreans and others to do joint developments of specific requirements for airworthiness and basic capabilities and maintainability and things like that. So we're very excited about where this fits in the ecosystem of not only the international piece, the ecosystem of the industrial military, industrial development piece, but also in the operational capabilities of all of these services, our U.S. Army and foreign partners. Uh, it, it seems to fit in a whole bunch of areas a lot of different ways, and we're very excited about the opportunities.